everybody. This is Barry Wiles with Sequencing Solutions, where we are sequencing with a cause. So in today's quick tip video, I'd like to cover a feature that not a lot of people either are aware of or it is very underutilized in sequencing, and it has to do with the color palette and a color gradient. So what I've got here is just a standard matrix and mega tree layout. And I'm going to show you a couple of things with the color palette and gradients to really give a different look to some of the effects that are used in X lights. And uh, when you're doing your sequencing, give it a little, your sequence a little more pop. So the first thing I've got here is I have a, um, a, uh, pinwheel and what I've done is I've basically stopped the motion I've just got it sitting there right now more so to um, show these parameters I like to show you so this is a typical color palette setup and there's several of these embedded in x lights you can make up your own color schemes depending on your, your sequencing I think a lot of people understand this and, and know how to do this uh, quite well but one of the features that you have in the color palette that may not be obvious is what's called a gradient. So everybody knows typically how to change a color. You click on it. You can put the color in to the palette. You can save it, and you can keep different color palette combinations. Um, some of these are the def defaults in X-Lights. But one of the interesting uh, groups or sets are these down here. And what I'm going to do is show you how to actually create your own gradient palette so that you can use it in the effects and kind of show what it does in the effect. So if you actually right-click on the color, it brings up this uh, color curve generator. And you have some options on here on how to set this up. These are all standard setups that that X Lite gives you with a particular color pattern. And you also have the ability to do gradient or random, or it can put some random colors in. I don't use the random. Uh, I'm not going to cover that much in this video because I'm sure there are some uses for it, but I have not typically found anything that I use it for. So I want to specifically talk about the gradients, and we'll talk about editing these in a minute. So. Right now, what I'm going to do is just leave this kind of all color gradient that I have on here. Now, for some reason, if I wanted the gradient to go the other way, I can flip the colors around. Um, and we'll talk about editing these colors in a few minutes. So now that I've closed it, you can see that I have this little multicolor um, square in my color palette and I have it checked and if you look not over impressive basically all it's doing is it's running through that color pattern on the um, element that I have or effect that I have picked now one of the things that most people don't understand is you can actually adjust what these colors do so I'm going to open this up a little bit so you can see it better Now, if you look on the bottom, you have what's called a lock. Now, you can lock that color in so that it doesn't make any changes. But you also have this little clock down here. Now, what this little clock is representing or telling us is that basically over time, however long the time period is you have for this effect, it's going to run through that color gradient. So, as you can see, what you're, you're seeing on the, the effect right now is that it's running from red to blue through these colors. Now, if I put my mouse over that little clock and I click it, a little arrow shows up. And look what happens. Now, what I'm doing is I'm getting a gradient color in the direction of the arrow from my starting color to my ending color. So this rainbow look is matching the color gradient on the effect that I have picked. If I click on that arrow again, it moves the gradient in the opposite direction. So it starts off at red in the middle 
and goes out to purple on the end. If I click it again, I get this circular look, and it gives me a left to right feel in the um, color scheme. And if I want to put some motion on that, let's just put it at one right now so it's slow. I could also possibly play around with 3D and get some 3D effects, um, 3D inverted. So what this does is gives you, with just basically one selection on your color palette, a lot of different options to put a color palette or color effect on the effect that you're trying to run. Now, a lot of people downloaded and used the... Um, here comes the sun, and you'll notice in a couple of the, the sequences, you'll see yellows and reds um, kind of combined in effects. So basically what I did was I took the color palette, and I picked one that I felt was close to what I wanted to represent. So I, at that time, I wanted three colors. I wanted yellow, kind of orange in the middle, and yellow on the end. So you can see that you have these slider bars. When you bring this up, you can move the slider and you can blend these colors any way you want. So if we go back to the, I'm gonna say, no, I don't wanna save that. Oops, I'm sorry, yes. Let's go to the one where I have on here with the multicolors. Let's say I wanna move these shades around and I want more blue towards here or I want the green to be closer to here. Oops. I'll, I'll show you what I did there in a minute. Um, I can pick the little slider and move it around and get the color combinations that I want. So let's go back to the situation where I wanted to do the three colors, the yellow, the orange, and the yellow. So what I would do is you select on the end, and when you can see you got that double arrow look, you can give that a double click, and it brings up my color palette. So let's say I want the ends to be yellow. I'm going to come over this one. I'm going to say this one's yellow. And then I'll click on this middle. Let's say I want that to be a little on the orange side. So yellow and orange, I hit OK. Now my color palette um, is the yellow, the orange, and the yellow. Now, what's interesting is it defaults to the time clock. So then I would make the adjustments on the arrow to get the look or feel that I want on that particular um, effect. So what this gives you is a lot of versatility on the colors and things that you can do um, for a proper element that, you, that you're using in your sequence. Now, not every effect will give you all the options. I've noticed some effects will only allow you to run the color palette through time. It won't give you the ability to put the... Uh, um, gradients and stuff. So you'll have to play with the different effects and determine which ones you can and can't um, generate different types of, uh, of gradients on. So I'm going to go back and you can create a whole palette. Like if you want to have a bunch of different gradients, you can go to each of these square and create a different one and um, really pick the ones that you, that you, feel match the, the sequencing and color schemes that you want to use on your on your own projects. Now one thing I will say um, on the editor, and you saw me do it earlier and I kind of went back and, and did it, but if I just go anywhere and make a click, it will put a marker that I can slide and it defaults to black. If I double click on that, I can add a color. So if I wanted to put blue in there, um, I could put any color in there I want and move that up and, and get the desired look I'm looking for. So if you wanted to be one side more heavy to one color scheme or the other, it gives you a lot of flexibility in what you can do on the color palette and the gradients that you use. Now, the thing I think that's interesting with the color gradient is when you start getting into the bars effects and the... Um, um, a spiral effect. So, you know, typically on the bar, if I pick whatever colors I pick, you know, I can get, and I can, I can adjust this. I can 
you know, I can make it up, I can go to 3D, I can do highlight. There's a lot of different things. Um, Ron Howard did a great video on actually gradients and what you can do on these trees. So I, I would definitely recommend going and taking a look at his video. Uh, the, my purpose here is to kind of make a more shorter, condensed version of a color gradient and, um, and how it's used. So I'm not going to go through all the different things. Um, what, what's great about x -Lights is you have the ability to take an effect, and there's so many parameters that can be adjusted that that one effect could do so many different things that it makes it very unique. And I'll do another video on some of my programming tips on that with movement, color schemes, um, timings to, to give you a little bit of an idea of some of the, the different things you can do. So that'll, that'll come out on a, a future uh, tip video. But let's look and see what happens when we pick the gradient. Now, I'm going to go back to the clock for a minute. So again, if we just had the clock down there, all kind of underwhelming. I mean, there, there might be times when you want to do this. I, I use this effect and color wash kind of as a background for some of the programming I do. But what's neat here is now it, you can see the arrow directions are a little different because of the type of prop we're using in the effect. So when we were using the, um, the um, pinwheel, you notice that the arrows went you know, left and right or vertical. Here we're going, we can go to the right, which gives us our color pattern that way. We can do up and down. So now the bars are moving and we're getting bars with that color palette in it. We can go right to left and we can go opposite, you know, down to up. So it gives us a lot of flexibility on how we want to use this effect on a particular um, effect. And the same with the bars effect. So if you look at the bars effect, typically on, we'll put it on a tree. It gives you a nice spinning effect. I've got three colors picked. So instead of picking those three colors, let's go ahead and just pick the gradient. Now you get this nice rainbow effect inside the uh, lines. So it kind of blends them together. And you can play with that and how many different um, palette reps you want on there if, you know, to get the desired effect that you want on that. So the key to this is use these gradients to your advantage. They, they, they bring a lot of uh, impact to an effect where instead of just having, you know, three colors spinning on a tree, which can look interesting, you know, there, there's a lot of um, different effects and things out there. But if you really want to get a little more of a pop, you know, you're using a gradient, put a gradient color on there. And a, the gradient will act differently in different effects. And like I said, some effects, it basically will just give you the time version where it just blinks the colors. But on some of these, like the bars and the pinwheels and the fan, um, the gradient will actually work like we've shown to give you some um, versatility on the color palette. So I hope that helps. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe with everything going on in the world right now. I see a lot of new people out there sequencing for the first time. Uh, with people being home, there's more time being spent, I think, uh, on our hobby right now. So that, that's a good thing. So please do not be afraid to reach out if you have questions. We can be uh, reached on Messenger or on Facebook under Sequence Solutions. You can send us an email at Sequence, that's S-E-Q-U-E-N-C-E, -E -E, S-O-L, at yahoo.com. Or you can visit our webpage at www.sequencesol.com. Be more than happy to try to help uh, give you some answers or feedback on your questions. Also, we will be supplying future videos on tips and tricks as we go uh, through the year here. So please follow us on Facebook or follow us on YouTube and catch those videos as they come out. Hopefully these will uh, be of uh, some benefit. As always, we are greatly appreciative of the X-Lights community, the people who create and maintain this software. 
as uh, our, our website philosophy is, we donate 15% of everything we make to charity, and we develop 5% of everything we make to the Back to the x -Lights community to help improve and maintain the product. So we hope everyone has a great season, and may all of your displays be bright. Thank you, and have a good day.